UFC 299 was pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, lots to talk about. So the first thing I want to talk about was Song Yadong and fighting Peter Yan. Peter Yan did a great job. Congratulations to Peter Yan. Song has, you know, he lost, but in, in a lot of ways, his uh, pedigree kind of went up. You know, I like that he's got the whole cool um, Asian Tony Ferguson thing going on. And, you know, he's a respectful fighter, but he's, he's starting to come out with a little bravado. And that's nice to see. And his fighting style, too. He was kind of um, his mannerisms was kind of like Dustin Poirier a little bit. Did you notice that? Like the way he kind of, you know, shoulders up and kind of like a, I, I can't explain it. Just rewatch it if you haven't seen it and think Dustin Poirier while you're watching Song Yudong's kind of his stature a little bit. It's comparable. It was a really high paced fight and uh, it was good. It was good. But yeah, Yan is proving that he's definitely a gatekeeper and he is the pinnacle of a level into the elite you know so if you can get past yawn you are an elite fighter gilbert burns that was interesting with the corn rolls and stuff like that it was cool it's cool seeing him like that rough fight um that was a hard one i'll be honest we did not like seeing that um the group that was watching with me did not enjoy seeing gilbert burns get knocked out that was hard. And an interesting side note to think about is you guys know that I love Hamza Shemaev, right? He's a beast. He's a savage. He's like, he's, in my opinion, the most exciting fighter. He's who I get the most excited about watching when he's booked. Once every 5,000 years that he is booked. It's been 84 years. It's okay. But think about this. Madalena did something that Hamza Shemaev couldn't do, which is knock out Gilbert Burns. Think about that. You know, styles make fights, they say. And there's matchups that work. There's styles that work against elite fighters in matchups. I can't think of a really good example right now. Maybe Sean Strickland versus Israel Adesanya. Like Adesanya just clears out the division and then you get this weird, awkward Philly shell fighter that just kind of like hacks Adesanya's brain. Actually, like MVP versus Holland. And we need to get into that, too. But yeah, it was hard seeing Gilbert get knocked out. And wow, Madalena did something that Hamzat Shamayev couldn't do. And that's put away Gilbert Burns. But his style may have been responsible for that, which I'm pretty sure it is. So let's talk about Holland versus MVP. That was wild. Um, I was stressed out the entire fight. Um, I love both fighters. Uh, MVPs and he's how could you not like him? Seriously, the guy the guy is like dynamic. He's interesting. He's creative. He's kind of weird in a in a good way. He's super stylized and talented and fast. He's Venom is a good name for him because he's striking like like a cobra, like pop pop, and the way he moves back and forth like that. It was funny seeing Holland. Holland was actually getting very frustrated during that fight. I don't know if you noticed that, but it's like anytime he was trying to get in there, MVP was just like two, three, five steps ahead of him the whole time. So he's just like, imagine swinging at something that you're normally able to hit. Normally you're able to smack it and you just can't touch it. Imagine chasing something and grabbing at something you can't touch. You know, he did get some good action. I think, I believe in the second round, maybe in the first, first or second round, he got a hold of him, got him on the ground, got him real close to choking him out. But MVP got out of it and just completely frustrated Holland the entire time and you could see that he was frustrated and at the end he you know he did something funny he kind of you know he was mimicking MVP's you know fight style which seems almost like dancing to a certain extent 
but um you know it was like a joke where you didn't have to say anything but everybody understood what he was doing i love the personality of kevin holland i don't know what's up with him i don't know if like i think there he's frustrated about more things than just the way mvp fought him i think Kevin Holland's like frustrated about something in his personal life. I don't have any evidence of that, but it's just something I'm reading on him. And, you know, because when he came into the scene, he talked a lot. He had a very big personality. And just lately, his past couple fights, he wasn't... He, he just doesn't seem himself. And... This last one with MVP, I don't know if he was just really nervous and nerves were getting to him or what, but he just was not himself at all. He like came as a cowboy, and I mentioned it in my la one of my last videos that during the press conference, you know, MVP's feeling the energy of the crowd, and Holland just walks off like awkwardly. He kind of does this kind of thing and then walks off. It, it seemed like maybe frustration or anxiety nerves just overwhelmed i don't know he knows he's supposed to put on a form it performance but he's not feeling it and you know one thing that i like about kevin holland he's very authentic so when you're an authentic person you can't just flip a switch and turn into colby covington you know um you know like colby covington does with his whole character and facade kevin holland's actually genuine he's he's um authentic so he knows he's supposed to be putting on a performance but with anxiety and nerves and maybe things going on in your personal life feeling overwhelmed uh an authentic person will feel awkward being unauthentic when they know they're supposed to like be entertaining but you have to feel good to entertain you have to feel like you're on top of the world i mean to be good at it from my experience i'm sure there's people that can fake it all day long uh, like Robin Williams. But when you're feeling good and on top of the world, there's a playfulness of, in your spirit. All right, so I thought I was done with the video. As I was editing and talking about each different fighter and what, how I kind of perceive them and what I think the general audience perceives them, I started getting into something interesting with Kevin Holland. And as I started doing a little research, I realized how much I was right. And so what you're about to see is Kevin Holland fighting with that playful spirit of feeling free and not having burdens of anxiety or personal things weighing you down too much. So I feel like he has some personal things going on, something I don't know. I wish him the best, but I want to show you the difference between somebody who stressed out fighting, which we saw him with MVP, and the same person when he feels good and when there's no burden, not so much burden on his shoulders and he feels more free and more himself. He has a very playful spirit and this is why I really like Kevin Holland, but there is a YouTube channel that put up a collaboration of him talking during fights. Bro. Did what? you just say collaboration when you meant compilation? No. I didn't say collaboration instead of compilation. Yeah, but this compilation really shows you his spirit. He's funny. He reminds me of Chris Tucker a little bit. Like if Chris Tucker was an MMA fighter. I'm talking about like smoky Chris Tucker, not like now Chris Tucker. <laughs> Anyway, let's watch this video together. It started cracking me up, so I stopped it so we could watch it together. <laughs> Why do you hit me so hard? Where the fuck is Dana? <laughs> He's never been wrestled with that kind of pressure. Good kick. <laughs> uh, 
Oh my god. See what I mean? He's a character. He he he's like Dana. Where the fuck is Dana? What what's the like? <laughs> You know what I mean about that? Your your spirit feels more playful with the world and the environment around you. And that's when you're feeling good and on top of the world. I just don't think Kevin Holland's feeling on top of the world right now. So I wish him the best, whatever's going on with that. It was awesome that Madalena called out Shavkat. Nobody calls out Shavkat. Nobody. That was impressive. So yeah, Madalena's definitely getting on my radar. I admitted in my pre-fight press conference uh, response video that, you know, he, I didn't find him interesting yet, but he's starting to get on my radar. So I'll start paying attention to him a little bit more. Dustin knocks out St. Denise. I didn't know what was going to happen in that fight. I was worried for Dustin in this fight because you got a, a young hungry lion ready to tear it up, ready to make a statement and show, you know, stake his claim in this division. And Dustin decided to be a gatekeeper. And I didn't think Dustin's ego would allow him to be a gatekeeper, but I think I was just looking at it at a different perspective than him. His ego is the reason he wants to gatekeep. And I think he likes that. So yeah, he can't be the champion, but he's going to be like, your way to the champion. The only way you're going to get a shot to be champion is by going through me. And that makes him to me, one of the most badass fighters in the division. So he got knocked out for the BMF belt with Justin Gaethje, but he gets a get out of jail free card with anything like that. Kind of like, I'm not comparing Ferguson to Poirier by this statement. But one thing you can say about Ferguson is he will test people and he will step in front of anybody at any time. Now, Dustin Poirier's done that and had success at it <laughs> a lot. So he is a great gatekeeper. So you kind of want to test somebody coming through like the Patty Pimblett, Tony Ferguson fight was the perfect the perfect gatekeeper kind of thing to test Patty. And I think that is pretty much Patty's limit. I could be wrong. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm not really a fan of Patty Pimblett. I just don't, um, he does nothing for me. And I don't understand the hype. Like he kind of, he's a goofball, like a Muppet, you know, like, and not a funny Muppet. Like his only joke is he calls people sausages. You're a sausage. What? Why are you calling this ripped Conan the Barbarian Spartacus looking UFC fighter a sausage? I, I just don't get it. Like a sausage is like a, you know, it's fat bursting out of a, a tightly wrapped skin. Like what? I just don't, I just don't understand him. I just don't. Well, did you see that somebody bet $127,000 on St. Denise? against Dustin Poirier. That is a fight that I wouldn't even bet on because who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? And honestly, it's not like Dustin Poirier like was just piecing him up and dominating them the, the entire fight. It was actually the opposite. Denise, St. Denise was dominating Dustin through the majority of the fight. But, you know, like one thing that I was excited about St. Denise with is he's not scared of a dog fight. And if Dustin can get you into a dog fight, he will. And your chances aren't good because history seems to keep repeating itself when people try to get in dog fights with Dustin. So I, that guy lost $127,000 betting on, on that fight. We're moving on to Sean O'Malley and Vera. Cheeto. Cheeto looked scared, apprehensive, nervous he didn't seem comfortable the entire time that's understandable and i'll actually give you my thoughts on this too i'm okay with them taking that loss off of sean i think he twisted his ankle i don't think cheeto was a superior fighter if you watch that fight sean was piecing him up cheeto did not gain an advantage until sean twisted his ankle and sure maybe it could have been to a lucky shot that cheeto landed on his leg and it went numb sure i'll give you that but it wasn't until he twisted his ankle 
and it wasn't like he kicked it and then he twisted his ankle. He kicked it, the fight continued, and then he moved weird and twisted his ankle and fell. And then Cheeto capitalized on it and the ref called it off pretty quick too. After seeing how much of a superior fighter Sean O'Malley was against Cheeto, give the boys his O back, you know? Because that was a fluke, just like he's saying. They're not gonna give it back, it's just silly talk. They've been trying to get John Jones his loss, his uh, only loss due to disqualification for like a billion years. And if Dana can't do it, nobody's going to be able to do it. So, you know, I like the little he holds his, his O up just to let everybody know, you know, we know, we know it doesn't count, you know. But yeah, with you now, Sugar Show, it doesn't count. Not in my eyes. It was a good card, Sugar Show. He's getting a lot of hate right now because he didn't call out Marab. And then there's a video floating around. In this video... Marab is confronting Sean in the back and he's like, you should have said my name. And then Sean was like, who was that? I don't know if he was being serious or trolling. Yeah, there was something going on and people are like, come on, don't be dodging Marab. I guarantee you, Sean O'Malley is not scared of Marab. He's not. I don't know who would win that fight because Marab has such a weird style. It might be the perfect, you know, it might be that perfect style make fights fight to do something to Sean O'Malley that we haven't seen yet. And we know that Marab has like just an endless gas tank and he's relentless. He's just a different kind of fighter. I'm not counting Marab out for a second. Who he called out? Ilya Tapira? You're going to say that that's not badass. Everybody's like, stay and defend your division, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, let's just, let's see the most interesting fights. But yes, we do have an interesting fight that should be in Torperia, which is Marab. Marab deserves it next. I want to see that fight. We need to see who's better between Mar uh, Marab and Sean to see who's going to rule this bantamweight division for the time being. That's all I got for today. I invite you to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, let me know your thoughts, and let's do this. I'll see you at the next video. Chill. Thank you for kicking in with MMA Flex and Chill. Chill. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell. Ring